So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and welcome to my ultimate easter egg guide walkthrough for the zombies map Attack of the Radioactive Thing in Infinite Warfare Zombies. This is going to be an in-depth guide showing you how to do the entire easter egg from start to finish and there will be a lot of in-depth explanations and tutorials for each specific segment. I'm going to break it down into different parts but there will always be additional information down below in the description and there will be a visual prompt on screen to tell you to open the description in case you need further instruction. Now if you do go on to find this guide useful let me know in the comments. Do drop a thumbs up if this helped you out in any way and do leave your PSN, Xbox Live and Steam names in the comments section if you need help finding some extra players to get you in the game. If you don't have this map on PS4 then do not worry as I'm doing a giveaway for a DLC code on PlayStation 4 on this video. All you need to do is make sure you've dropped a like rating, you leave a comment saying DLC 3 PS4 giveaway and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Now there are no prerequisites before starting this easter egg but I would highly recommend you put on some very useful fate and fortune cards that will help you out during your time on the map. And once we jump into the map the first thing we want to do is we want to turn on the power so that we can speak to Elvira, retrieve her spell book and return it to her. But whilst we're on the pathway to getting ourselves the power we can get one of the buildables which is something you will need for a later to step in this easter egg so it's easy just to build this right now and this is at the ice cream parlor as you can see on screen i pick up the blueprint and i'm going around this section picking up all three items to build this seismic wave generator if someone in your game pick this up and keep this for later because we're going to be needing it but once you've gotten the power turned on you then want to go speak to elvira and you'll notice that she'll ask for a spell book you want to make your way back to the ice cream parlor and in the same room where you built this seismic wave generator you're going to notice opposite is going to be an open door with this book. You want to go ahead and pick up the book, bring it back to Elvira and she'll give you a little vial. Now in order to fill this vial up we're going to need to kill zombies but specifically using the cleaver melee weapon. So you want to open up throughout the map till you get to the market and inside the market near the freezer you're going to notice this little shark with a knife inside of it you want to pick that up and you will have the cleaver knife you want to be meleeing zombies so that each time you melee the soul from the zombie will start filling up this vial whilst we're doing that we can start to work on getting the main easter egg pieces there is a lot of them to find but these can be picked up and we can retrieve them in any order we choose so you don't have to follow exactly in this video but we're going to start off by trying to get all the pieces for the zombie body we're going to need to get a head two arms two legs and a torso again these can be picked up in any order we'll start with one of the legs which is really random you want to make your way past racing stripes up towards elvira's little area and you want to use an explosive grenade or explosive weapon at this tree and you should notice this leg will fall down you want to interact with it and that will be the leg now for the other zombie leg you want to make sure you're paying attention to the sort of soldier nuclear zombies and the very first nuclear soldier zombie that is killed in the game will drop a leg leg piece that you can pick up so please pay attention when you're killing zombies that the first time anyone comes across one and they've killed it that they pick up the leg so that we have both legs for one of the zombie arm pieces you want to go down to the beach where you pick up the power switch and you want to use that seismic wave generator on this little patch where you can see the hand used to be you can sort of see it sticking out you want to place down the seismic wave generator and as it pulsates, you'll notice that the hand will slowly rise out from the sands of the beach. And eventually you'll be able to pick that up and that will be one of the zombie arm pieces. And the final arm piece that we're going to get is going to be via a fire pit in the RV park. Which is going to be just above from the beach. It's where there's loads of caravans and campfires. You're going to want to go to this fire pit and you'll notice the arm there. Now we have two more zombie pieces which we need. But also whilst you're doing this you should have filled up that little vial and you want to go and talk to Elvira again. She's going to come out of the couch and she'll be in the map fighting zombies with you and you want to guide her out of the office towards this little portal which will reveal the teleporter to Pack-A-Punch. 
From here, once you're in Pack-A-Punch, you want to activate this button on the wall and when you teleport out, you'll be inside an RV where you'll notice a zombie's head which you can pick up and will have the zombie's head. Now whilst Elvira is out of her chair and she's around in the world, there will be a mirror lying on her sofa which you want to pick up as this is going to be necessary as well. But we can move on to the final bit which is the zombie's torso and for this you want to obtain the crowbar melee weapon. This can be found in the pool section just above the stairs from bomb stoppers there's a little tucked corner where you'll be able to build another blueprint and in there you'll find the crowbar once you've obtained the crowbar you want to make your way inside the supermarket and you'll notice that this deep freeze trap will not activate because there is a power box missing you want to make your way outside of the supermarket go towards the gas station and you'll notice on the set of crates will be a power box pick that up take that back over to the deep freeze trap Insert that in and you'll be able to activate the trap for 750. Once that's finished, you want to go and melee the pig in front of this glowing zombie's chest with your crowbar. The pig should explode and will reveal the zombie's torso, which you'll be able to pick up. Now that we have all the zombie body parts, we now just need to finish the set of mirrors. So you want to make sure that you still have the crowbar as your melee weapon and you want to go outside the supermarket. You'll notice these two crashed vehicles. On one of them on the right will be a slightly bent wing mirror mirror that when you melee it will fall to the ground and you can pick that up and that will be one of the mirrors and the final mirror is going to be a glass shard so you want to make your way to the restrooms in the RV park and you want to melee the unbroken mirror which will break and will shatter and give you this glass shard you don't want to make your way back to the spawn and you want to lay down these mirror pieces exactly as you see me do in this video here and then finally interact with the bed which will put all of the zombie body parts on here now in the same room room that we built the seismic wave generator and the ice cream parlor all the way back at the start of the map there's going to be a tiny punch card that we picked up if you haven't already go there and pick that up bring that back to the spawn and you'll be able to insert it into this little typewriter now I highly suggest that when you do this you have someone training a zombie round at the end of the round far away from the spawn area because you don't want to get distracted during this because if a zombie hits you you will come out of this automatically and when you interact with this little machine you'll notice a light flowing between 10 different sort of small circles what you need to do is you need to use trial and error to activate this at a certain time to reveal a number on this little monitor in front of it it's going to be a five digit number and this will involve trial and error and you remembering exactly where you interacted with the digit for the number to appear so essentially on this machine there are 10 little small circles and your little led light will flash from left to right on any of these and you need to remember the exact position of the light it was in for you to get these numbers and this will take quite a while of trial and error so don't expect to get this on your first go but when you finally get it like I did you'll notice that you can interact with the machine slightly to the right it will be lit up yellow and this little mini death ray will shoot at the zombie body and it will actually turn it into a full-fledged zombie now we need to repeat this step again by interacting with the machine and again trying to get a five digit code. This again might take a lot of time because it's trial and error and there is no guarantee that you'll get this straight away but you will eventually be able to work it out and you'll be able to input the code and get it right and when you have you'll be able to use a death rate again and the zombie will turn into a key. You pick up that key and we're going to be using that in a little moment. There's a few other items we need for our sticker pack and this is going to be a Set of three items for the bomb which we're going to be using later and this is going to fill up above Elvira's face in the sticker pack so what you want to do is you want to go to this red car between the motel and the studio prone under the car you'll notice this item will be there there's going to be another item at the end of the stream below the bridge then from racing stripes towards Elvira studio this part will be behind a gate you interact with it and that will be all of those parts now now finally we need to fill up our sticker pack by getting the nuclear codes. Now for this step you want to obtain a crowbar and you'll be looking under the desk in the back of the beachside market where the safe is and you're going to notice hanging off this desk will be a small blue piece of paper with four numbers. This will randomize every game but in our game it was 2969. Now there's going to be four pressure gorges around the map and you want to match the pressure gorges with the numbers using the crowbar. Now it does not matter which pressure gorge has what number as long as all four around the map have the numbers that correlate to the piece of paper by the safe. So no particular order 
order, we're going to start with the Pressure Gorge, which is going to be behind a shack at the power station. So as you can see, just watch the little dial on it rise or fall, and I match that with the number two, so it's bang on two. I then go around the map and I find this one which is going to be next to the quickies perk and I make sure that one is stopped and hit on 9. I then run over around the map again to the next one which is going to be in the motel room where we pick up the crowbar and I get that stopped on the number 6. And then last but not least I go to behind the gas station and I stop that on 9. And once you've had all of these make your way over to the safe in the back of the market. And the safe should be open with a little piece of paper that you can pick up. And these are the nuclear codes. Now you're going to want to write these down at some point. You don't have to just yet. But just as a precaution write this down now. We just need one more final thing to fill up our sticker pack. And that is going to be the chemical station parts. These these are going to be in the same location every game you play. So we're going to start off with the first one, which is going to be towards the back of the beachside market, which is in the same room as the safe, just chilling on a sofa. We also need the valves, which are going to be in the RV trailer park, just sitting on a bench. And finally, the last part is a huge, huge computer, which is going to be on a bench on the hills, going down towards the beach. Now we have absolutely everything. You now want to go over to the gas station and with your key that the zombie transformed into, it will open up the garage. And now we can place all of those parts to make the chemical station. And also in this room, you're going to want to pick up these new pieces of Elvira spellbook. Okay, now here is where things are going to get extremely tricky to understand. I'm going to make this as simple as possible as we're going to do some very simple math in order for you to advance in this next step. Now what we're going to be looking for is an O looking symbol which is equivalent to a number which is going to be around the map. You're going to notice these they're going to be in four different locations that I'm showing you on screen now. So it will have a O symbol and then it will say equals and then a number. This can be any number and it will change every single game. Now there are four of these in total there's one on the door of the gas station that you're seeing now there's going to be one in the back of the beachside market next to the fridge there's going to be a sum in the rv on the fridge so you're going to need to go and pack a punch press the button teleport out to go into the rv to see this on the fridge and finally there's going to be one under the bridge so we have four separate locations where this o looking symbol is going to equal a number and these will all be different for these four locations what you need to do is have someone in your game change the color of the map by going to our virus studio and changing it using the machine in there now what you want to do is have them periodically change the colors so have people looking around the map staring at these symbols have the color change and what you should be looking for is to see if a slash is put in the equal sign basically by filtering through all these different colors if your sum never has a slash going through the equals that means that your sum is correct and that that number is the number that equals the O looking symbol. This will change every time you play, but in our game, the symbol under the bridge did not have a slash through the equal sign at any point during all four colors. What will happen in some instances is as the colors are changing, a slash will appear during that equal sign. If a slash never appears during any of the three filter colors being red, blue, and green, that means that this O symbol definitely equals the number that you're looking at. To so make a mental note or write down somewhere that your O symbol equals that number. Now that you've got that, you want to make your way over to the pool and you'll notice this small reception area and in the corner you'll notice a number and then a sort of M looking symbol below it. You'll need to note this down as well. So in our game we had the M symbol and then above it we had the number 6. So our O symbol equals a 9 and this M symbol equals a 6. What you now want to do is get your O number and times it by the M number. So in our game, the O was 9 and the M was 6. So 9 times 6 equals 54. There is a good chance your number won't be the same. But whatever number you do end up with, you want to look in Elvira's TV. And you'll notice that she has a set of numbers correlating to each color. Now in our game, we had 54. And if we look at the TV, 
any number between 53 and 55 means that you need to be in the red color filter. So since we had 54, and that's between 53 and 55, that means we need to be in the color red. Obviously, this will be different depending on your game. Whatever number you do end up with, look at her TV, and you notice blue says any number lower than 53 means it's going to be in the blue filter. If it's a number between 53 and 55, it's in red, and any number higher than 55 means green filter filter. So once you've figured out what color you need, change your game to match that color filter. Now once you're in the colored filter that the TV says that you should be in, do not change the color setting. Keep it on the color setting you have until you have finished this step because it is vital. Now around the map there are going to be six different scientific blackboards which all contain different ingredients and then the chemical compound symbols and numbers next to them. So one of these boards is going to be in the garage you can't miss it. Another one is going to be right on the beach. Another is going to be in the RV trailer park. Another outside of Elvira studio. There's going to be one in spawn. And then finally, there's going to be another one which is by the power station on the hill leading in towards the back of the market. You want to make sure that you turn left and it's going to be here. Now, you can take screenshots of these boards. That's what we do, but you don't necessarily have to. It just involves you having to run around the map. But essentially, you're going to want to get a mental note and pictures of each of these. To explain the maths of this easter egg step, we're going to acquire a load of different compounds and we're going to need to create compounds via various ingredients and each ingredient has their own values. As you can see on each whiteboard, it has the name of the actual ingredient and then to the right of it, it's got this little square box with all these numbers. What we need to do and what you need to do in your game whilst you're in this color filter is take down what the top number Number and then the left number of each ingredient is. So say for example, we needed to make something which involved needing plant food. We know that on the board here, plant food has nine and two, that being the top number nine and then the left one being two. Each of these, you only need to add the number on the top and the number on the left. But I won't confuse you too much with that because we're not gonna need to explain that just yet. What you now want to do around the map is you want to go and find these little radio boxes. There's gonna be one in the motel reception, there's gonna be one behind the gas station, there's gonna be one along the beach leading towards the RV trailer park. There's going to be another one in the power station there's also going to be one in Elvira studio on a chair. What you need to do is listen to these radios and listen to Dr. Bright explaining what chemicals work with the nuke and he's going to mention in particular on one radio what you must use in order to destroy the radioactive thing. This guy is going to talk a lot but you need to listen specifically to when he mentions on the exact elemental compound that he says will destroy the radioactive thing. This is the key to this step. A lot of people get confused because he mentions a lot of things that you can create, but you need to listen and only pay attention to what he says he knows will be able to destroy the radioactive thing. So in our game, this radio was found by the power station. I do believe that if it were 1945 all over again, that 3,4-dinitroxymethylpropane would be the leading candidate to end this crisis of epic proportions. I've devised the perfect solution to our mutated giant crab problem. 135 Terra Nitrophenol. He mentions that we need to make 135 Terra Nitrophenol. This sounds pretty daunting and confusing because obviously you wouldn't really have any idea how to make this stuff. And he does mention what ingredients you need to use, but he doesn't specify it to be with the ingredients within the map. It's more of a generic thing. So what I suggest is you open the description right now as I'll have a long, long list of every elemental compound that you could possibly need to build and also what ingredients you need in order order to make them. Now these change from game to game and there are around about five or six crazy compounds which the professor might ask you to make in order for this to work. Like I mentioned in our game he says 135 Terra Nitrophenol. The thing he's asking you to make is a compound which is going to take a few different mixes in order to finally create. So you need to work your way backwards in order to work out what you need. So by using the long long list in the description and we find 135 Terra Nitrophenol it's says that the ingredients needed to make that is detergent and phenyl sulfonic acid. Detergent is something which we can pick up straight away.
away, but the phenyl sulfonic acid is another compound that we need to create via other ingredients. So let's work our way backwards. So to make phenyl sulfonic acid, we're going to need phenyl and drain opener. So again, phenyl is another compound which we need to create by blending other items. So then you work your way back again and you see in the description again, it mentions how we make phenyl. So now we can finally start. Also in the description, I have a long, long list of every findable chemical on the map. There's 20 different findable chemicals and you're going to be using at least a fair amount of them in order to complete this easter egg. But if you know where these parts are, then that that's great, but if you need additional help in finding these parts and where they spawn, then just make sure you open that description. So for our particular game, we need to make phenol as the starting compound, which is a mix of wheel cleaner, motor oil, and insect repellent. So once we found all these items, we place them down on the mixing station. Now before we can do anything else, we need to do a little bit of maths. Now this is where all the boards around the map, when you were looking in the colored filter, come into play. Now the first ingredient we picked up was the wheel cleaner. So you want to go and look at your images that you took pictures of of the little boards around the map or stay in the colored filter and go around the map till you find the board which has wheel cleaner on and you look and notice the numbers next to it so on the little square diagram we have a five and a one so we add those together and we get six. We then also have the motor oil, which is 8 plus 7, so that's 15. So 6 plus 15 is giving us 21. And then finally, we want to add the insect repellent. On, on the board, it has a 9 and a 6, which gives us 15. So 6 plus 15 plus 15 equals 36. Our number was 9, so 36 minus 9 is 27. So we type that in, and it should work we click to start the chemical reaction and what should happen is bam you should get a compound in this little beaker to your right and that's one third of the way to making the compound that the Dr. Bright mentioned on the radio. So remember in our game we are making 135 terranitra phenyl because that's what Dr. Bright told us. We now need to make phenyl sulfonic acid and that's a combination of the phenyl compound that we just made and drain opener. Once you've got those ingredients added onto the mixing station you then want to look on the boards and you want to find out what phenyl equals in the chemical diamond with the top and left numbers. So for us that was 8 plus 8 which is 16 and then minus 9 which gives you 7. So we typed in 7 and as you can see the reaction was correct and bam we get given a new compound which is phenyl sulfonic acid. Now to finish the recipe and give us the 135 teranitrophenyl that Dr. Bright told us we then combine the phenyl sulfonic acid that we created with detergent. So by looking at the board when we're in the color filter the phenyl sulfonic acid on the, the chemical diamond top and left is a 8 and a 9 add that together gives us 17 then for detergent it's 8 so 17 plus 8 equals 25 and then what we do is we minus 9 which gave us 16 we type that in on the little chemical mixing station and bam we get given the chemical compound that Dr. Bright asked for like I mentioned earlier in the video there is about five or six ultimate compounds that you can make but Dr. Bright will only ask you for one because he will only mention that one specific elemental compound will be the one that will destroy the radioactive thing. Now if a radio hasn't mentioned anything at all you may have noticed that you may have a battery in your invent that a zombie has dropped. Some of these radios will acquire a battery in order to continue on the radio message and if that's the case then continue on the radio message until the doctor mentions exactly what compound is needed to kill the radioactive thing. Once you've got what compound you need to make Open the description and work your way backwards, finding what elemental ingredients you need to add to the mixing station, doing the bit of maths that I showed you and inputting it in, and you should be making compounds, then mixing other ingredients with compounds, and you keep mixing until eventually you'll get the ultimate compound. Once you've got that, you want to go to the massive bomb in the garage, and you want to add the bomb parts that we picked up a long time ago, as well as the compound that you've now created. You'll be given a prompt where it can teleport 
all players into the boss fight and this is where you need to set up so I would recommend playing on for at least 8 to 10 rounds so you get yourself a lot of points get yourself some perks get yourself pack-a-punched weapons maybe even double pack-a-punch if you know how to do that once everyone in the game is ready everyone go around the nuclear bomb in the gas station interact with it and you'll notice it will start to glow and just glisten a weird little color once that's done every single one of you guys interact with the bomb and you'll be teleported into the beach boss fight itself this boss fight works in three different stages and i'll be explaining it as we go through each stage starting with stage one where you have to stand by the bomb as it's a payload as you stand next to the bomb it will slowly make its way down towards the beach near to the radioactive thing in co-op i would highly suggest having players train around the front of the beach by these rocks that way they can get the zombies away from the player that is escorting the bomb all the way down to the beach you'll notice that the radioactive thing will shoot out loads of the krog eggs in the sky and if you don't take them out then there'll be a load of krogs that will be trying to attack you you just want to essentially stand by the bomb as it makes its slow descent down the beach all the way in front of the radioactive thing you notice it will then sort of take charge and launch into the thing and it will move on to the next phase of this attack now in co-op this is definitely a lot easier and around this section you'll notice that there are death rays there's one in each corner of the cliffs and there's one right in the middle on the beach and also one on top of the bridge the idea for this step is at certain times the radioactive thing will reveal a small tiny hitbox on its chest where it glows green and you need to use these death rays to hit it at the exact right moment to burst it and to keep inflicting damage this guy's gonna be sending out tons of zombies is gonna shoot out loads of krogs as well so you need to watch out he'll sort of twist his body in certain directions which will block off the death ray shots from working from one specific place and will be much more effective in a different part of the beach but as you can see this is quite a long step and the hitbox on this isn't exactly great either but once you do start to get this you'll notice this weird nuclear goo will start spewing out of his chest and once you've hit him quite a few times with a death ray he will start to move really close to the actual sand of the beach and you'll notice that the nuclear bomb that was there in the previous step is now sort of there and you'll be able to interact with it all players must now make their way down to the lower level of the beach and right in front of the radioactive thing will be this sort of materializing nuclear bomb that we pushed in the previous step all players need to interact with this to start the process of it phasing back into reality and you want to back your way up all the way to the back of the beach area here what's going to happen is the radioactive thing is going to launch a load of krogs and zombies and it will start spewing this nuclear acid across the entire beach and it will slowly make its way further up towards where you're camping and this is going to be the crucial moment because once it's shot out a fair amount of krogs and it's filled up with acid all over the beach it's going to launch a laser maze now what you need to do is all players need to traverse through this laser maze and get to the nuclear bomb before the timer ticks down on screen everyone needs to interact with it all at once and need to get there before the five second countdown timer finishes on your screen if you do this and you manage to be successful you'll be teleported inside the belly of the radioactive thing and remember that bomb code i told you to note down earlier in the video you won't be able to press back to look at it but you're going to need to type in the bomb code that you had in your sticker pack if all players type this in correctly within the certain time limit then that will be the end of the easter egg but as you can see here i failed unfortunately and we get thrown back in and we just have to repeat the step again so the best way to traverse these lasers is as soon as you see the mist appear you want to start to crouch move forwards the laser above you you'll be able to go under then it's a simple case of jumping and sliding to make your way and traversing across these lasers as quickly as possible this pathway on the right seems to be the best way for at least me and my experience anyway to be able to get past all these lasers and get to the bomb before the timer even starts ticking down but once all players are there they interact with the bomb and they input the code correctly then bam that will be the end of the easter egg you'll get the cutscene you'll get the achievement and the piece of soul key and that will be it this is without a doubt the hardest easter egg inside of infinite warfare zombies and maybe one of the hardest easter eggs in call of duty zombies ever just because it involves a lot of maths trial and 
an error and almost in a way getting lucky. So I'd really recommend that when you go in that boss fight, you have some great Fate and Fortune cards such as Perks Insured, so that if you go down, you'll get your perks when you get back up and reanimated so you get instantly revived as well. But if you did find this guide useful in any way, shape or form, make sure you drop a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it as I've been spending so much time playing this map, streaming it, trying to get the best strategies down to complete this Easter egg. And now I have the guide for you guys. If at any point you're struggling with any of the explanations for the steps within this guide, open the description. Like I mentioned, you'll see a written tutorial as well as everything you need to know about the elemental chemical step involving all the chemical ingredients ingredients, their locations and spawns, as well as how to make every single compound that you may need just in case Dr. Bright does mention the exact specific one that doesn't match what you saw in this video. But thank you so much for watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below as well and I'll catch you guys on another video very very soon. A video very very soon. A video very very soon. A video very very soon.